Somewhere in an unmarked grave at Sandgate Cemetery in Newcastle, Australia, lies an outlaw who was almost forgotten by history. Overshadowed by other names now synonymous with Australia's outlaws like Ned Kelly or Ben Hall, this outlaw's name was barely whispered for over 60 years after their death. An orphaned circus ringleader, a well-known horse rough rider, the leader of a gang, and notorious outlaw with a knack for evading police capture. This is the legend of the Lady Bush Ranger, Jesse Hickman. Welcome to the third episode in the Bush Ranger series here on Shadow Matter where we will be exploring the outlaws of Australia's colonial past. Today's episode, we're going to be delving into the legend of one of Australia's only female outlaws, Jessie Hickman, who led a very colourful and dangerous life, who according to legend, once escaped police custody by jumping from a moving train and even had a hideout in the mountains of Wallamy National Park that is still there to this day. If this is your first time here, hello and welcome. Consider subscribing to see more content on a darker side of our world with an Australian focus. If you would like to learn more about today's episode, all links of sourced information can be found in the description of this video. Born Elizabeth Jessie Hunt on the 6th of September 1890 in Burraga, New South Wales, to parents James Hunt and Susan Ann McIntyre, not a lot is known about her early life, but according to multiple sources, her parents sold her to a traveling bush circus known as Martinis when she was only eight years old. Martinis was owned by Martin Briony and was renowned throughout the eastern parts of Australia for their buck jumping shows and displays of horsemanship. And it was during her time with Martinis that young Jessie developed into an exceptional rough rider herself, often wowing crowds with her amazing equestrian skills. It's been reported that Jesse found a surrogate father figure in Martin Briony, and when he died in 1907, she became conflicted with grief and trauma. But somehow finding the courage to take over the circus and become the ringmistress, manager, and promoter. Martinis was ultimately sold in 1910, and for a brief period of time, Jesse went by the name of Mrs. Martini, and there were even references to her being Martini's widow. Somewhere around this period, Jesse had met and began a relationship with Benjamin Hickman. And the two had a son in 1913 in Sydney. Not being overly fond of domesticity or motherhood, Jessie gave her son to a close friend for her to raise as her own. Benjamin Hickman enlisted in the Australian Imperial Forces during World War I, where he was seriously injured, taking two bullets in the chest. While her partner was away, fighting in World War I, Jessie adopted her mother's maiden name of McIntyre and fell into a life of petty crime and gambling often wasting her earnings betting on horses and dogs and supplementing her debts by stealing whatever she could. This resulted in two jail stints at Long Bay Jail in Sydney between 1913 and 1916. In 1920, when Benjamin returned to Australia after the war, he and Jessie married and for a short time settled down in Sydney, during which the couple continuously fought and Jessie would often run away to the Candos Ralstone area. The two eventually separated in 1924, with her husband stating that his wife had no interest in living in the city and would rather be in the country surrounded by horse and cattle. After the separation, Jessie decided that since she had been working and supporting herself since the age of eight, she didn't need to rely on a husband for money. But the thought of finding any legitimate work didn't appeal to her so much. And so began a clandestine operation of cattle rustling in New South Wales' Upper Hunter and Central Tablelands of what is Wallamy National Park today. Jessie would use this area as her base, often traversing the wilderness in the dead of the night, picking off small numbers of cattle and drove them up mountainsides to mix with her own herd. The next day, she would sell the cut price cattle in town markets to unsuspecting buyers. Local police caught wind of the thievery occurring but Jessie was always able to give them the slip, probably thanks to her exceptional horse riding skills. She was known to have a hideout in a cave on Nullo Mountain, and the locals of nearby towns would steer clear of her, often not even reporting her crimes out of fear. They even dubbed her the Lady Bush Ranger. Rumours began swirling through the small communities of rural New South Wales, and this caught the attention of many young men 
who were infatuated with the romantic idea of a woman outlaw. These young men decided to join her for wild adventures, and they became known as Jesse's Young Bucks. The gang operated in the Wallamy National Park area and continuing on with their cattle and horse stealing, and for a time, the gang remained undetected by authorities, but time was running out for Jesse and her bushranging. By 1926, the law began to catch up with the Lady Bushranger, and she was wanted by the government of New South Wales for stealing six head of cattle from Mr. James Frederick Mills of Geelong. With a warrant out for her arrest, Jessie Hickman went on the run. Her rough riding skills made short work of the steep and rugged terrain that she knew well. Jessie managed to evade police capture for the next two years, but there was a few times where she was in custody and once gave them the slip by escaping via the ladies' bathroom on a moving train. In 1928, Hickman was finally arrested and charged with the offence of the cattle stealing. By this time, two other stealing charges were added to the charge sheet. As she stood trial in court, Jessie argued that she had no knowledge of the stolen livestock. She also claimed that if she did have possession of unknown cattle in her herd, then they were most likely strays. Jessie brushed off additional questions as to how strays would have wandered 50 miles to her property. But nonetheless, she was acquitted of all charges. After the court trial, Jessie Hickman lived the rest of her days at her Red Bank property near Denman in the Upper Hunter. Not a lot is known about Jessie's activities after this. What we do know is that in September of 1936, Jessie fell ill with chronic head pains and was taken to hospital in Musselbrook. Uncertain of the cause, doctors moved her to Newcastle's mental hospital, where she died of a brain tumour a few days later. She was only 46 years old. Despite her notoriety during her short life, Jessie was buried in an unmarked pauper's grave at Newcastle's Sandgate Cemetery. Ironically, Jessie Hickman was not a pauper. In fact, at her death, her estate was worth a few hundred pounds, which was adequate money in those days to buy a burial plot with a headstone. Jessie was forgotten for over several decades until recently, when her legend was the subject of two books, including The Burial by Courtney Collins and Out of the Mists by Hickman's granddaughter, Dee Moore. Thanks for watching. I do apologize for the brevity of this video, and that is due to a lot of information not being available online and a lot of it appearing as hearsay and rumor. And if you like this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this and hit that notifications bell to keep up to date with the latest videos. And together, we can explore the strange, the terrifying, the unknown, the shadow matter.